Hello everyone, I'm wearing green because we are going into the jungle. We're gonna go see some gorillas in the wild and this can take up to six hours to trek and to look and to find gorillas. This experience of seeing gorillas in the wild is something I've wanted to do far before moving to Egypt, far before moving to the continent. Let's just get going on the whole story. You got me smiling, smiling, oh you're smiling. On our way to see the gorillas, we're up in the mountains. We're really up because these are mountain gorillas. So we're going through, we're going through, and we're in Uganda, which is connected to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And as we're going through, we pass the refugee camp which was vast and huge and wide and deep, filled with people from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So it was a moment of feeling like, wow, I'm so lucky. I don't know how to describe that feeling when you pass something like that. Just a moment of you want the best for people. You know that you're going to see the gorillas who have been through so much as well. and. As a tourist, you're paying to keep them alive. You're giving people money in return for seeing them alive. So it really is just a moment of just really reflecting about our world and how we treat others and how we treat the environment and how people need to escape their country sometimes. And that should be peaceful. And we should advocate for peace around the world despite the country. And there are incredible people born every day, everywhere. First, they told us beforehand, spread the word and we love our country and we think that other people don't really know about it or don't think highly of our country and we would love people to travel to Uganda and see it for its natural beauty and be able to inform them about the gorillas and teach them everything we know, just share our beautiful nature with others. So that was a really nice introduction and we were all really taking in how wonderful it is to be in a country where people want you to come not just for tourism, but because they really genuinely care about their country. It's just so rich in Uganda. It's absolutely incredible with all the natural resources, with all the people that have such rich culture, with all the animals. It's absolutely gorgeous of a country. So we're walking through after that introduction and we had our little walking sticks, which are definitely necessary in Uganda because it is slippery. That mud is mud is mud that you would use on your face and that you can use on your body and skin, that red clay. It's not even mud, it's that clay. So we're walking around in this clay and we're using our sticks and we're taking our time because the guide said it won't take too long today. Nothing could have prepared us for how long it actually took. These tours can take up to six hours of trekking through the jungle and eventually get toward the gorillas. We're with our walking sticks. We are going. We are going. We are going. It's not even much of an incline. We're on this route that's basically just a path and a stroll and a walk. So we're going and then we stop in this field where people used to live. They were cutting down all the trees and then the government was like, you know what? We need to really take care of the environment versus people. So they had the tribes move into the village life instead. And now they're intermingling with other tribes, other people in general, and they're losing some of their culture as a result, which I always find that really sad, but I see both sides of let's protect nature it's definitely a controversial topic and my opinion, I don't know, the argument about them clearing the land and ruining it. If nature dies, they die. Like, they know that. So, like, they can't just destroy everything and expect to live because they're literally living off the land. I did see it with my very own eyes. But I'm not totally convinced. I would need a little more from the indigenous people themselves and how everything in their perspective went down for real. <laughs> because we often hear 
other people's perspectives instead of the indigenous. Maybe they did realize that they were impacting the gorillas in a negative way because they had less space since there were villages all around in the surrounding area that they wanted to avoid, so maybe they were therefore taking up the space of the gorillas and agreed with the government and thought it was best to enter the villages or maybe they thought no we were still living in harmony with the gorillas and we were figuring it out and we were forcibly moved into the villages but that again is a result of now living in villages towns cities so that's just my input and you're welcome to in the comment section down below put in your own input i know some people disagree with me that's totally cool i like to learn from other people i like to share my thoughts and ideas and then hear thoughts and ideas in return but just based off of my knowledge my research thus far that tends to be where i sway but i can see both sides just make sure you keep the comment section kind but there is some growth everything's coming back up we're in the clearing we're eating we're enjoying, we walk a little bit further. And I'm telling you all, this is a stroll through the jungle. It was trees, not too many vines, which I think is cool, but it was just a nice path that was open and wide. We can talk along the way. It's really just a stroll through the jungle. And if you're scared of snakes and you end up going to Uganda, just walk in a straight line so those snakes can feel the vibrations and they can feel it through the ground vibrating in the soil and they go in the opposite direction of you. The only reason a snake bites is if it's caught off guard because it can't figure out where you are because everyone's moving in different directions. The vibrations are coming from every which way. They can't figure out which way to go. So by the time your ankle gets around, they're, mm, they're biting because they're scared. That's why snakes bite. I personally, I like snakes. I think they're cool and I think they're cute. And I've never even seen one when I went to these countries. I see their home sometimes. I just haven't seen any sunbathing or doing anything because they probably feel my vibrations beforehand and head in the opposite direction. So that's just a fun thing about snakes if you're concerned because these jungles have every type of snake you can really think of lurking in the corners. <laughs> so we're walking along. We're not grabbing onto vines even if they're there because what if it's a snake? We all of a sudden get to a spot and we're told to put our walking sticks down on the ground, leave them there, Make sure the flash is off our cameras. Make sure that we stay at least 10 meters away and put up our masks so we don't accidentally infect any of the incredible gorillas we're about to see. So we step into the clearing and we're wondering why did we put down our walking sticks? And they told us because the gorillas in the past have been speared to death. So when they see a walking stick, it reminds them of a giant sphere, which is really sad because they have awesome memories and they've been through trauma. And like humans, they have feelings. And like most animals, they have feelings. So they remember this and they feel threatened and they might get more aggressive. I didn't know and it blew my mind. Oftentimes, when I think of poachers, because these are the people that are spearing the gorillas, when I think of them, I think of people who are profiting from the fur. The ones who are going to sell the fur, the ones who are from different countries coming in, they're hiring locals to do it. I don't know why I never even thought of that. I just really envisioned in my mind, people coming from other countries, leaving. And they have a middleman involved. So then they, if you've ever watched a crime show, they're trying to get away with murder. They know how dangerous it is because the animal's more precious in many of these countries. Many of these countries have these laws. You want to harm an innocent animal? Then we're gonna harm you before you have a chance to harm them. And it deters a lot of people from poaching. So I do personally, I think heavy consequences sometimes make it so people don't make the wrong choice. And that's good for the animals. I wonder if there's investigations afterward, if it's a local who's going after the animal of, okay, who hired this local to do that work and trying to investigate who is the source of the problem, who is benefiting the most, can we catch them as well? I mean, it's crazy to think 
I, I just never thought of that. I always, it made, it opened my eyes to thinking of it in a new way. So for me, that was just a whole moment of, wow, I had no idea that they were hiring locals. It makes so much sense, but it's so sad. It's so sad, right? Like I thought it was just a solution. You lift up your weapon to an endangered species and then boom, you're the one hurt. But no, it's so much more complex. So if you're ever in the middle of Uganda and you're not planning to see gorillas, and all of a sudden there's a group of gorillas around you, just kindly put your walking stick down because it's respectful toward the animal. They've been through trauma. That's all you can do to just help out and it'll keep you safe and it'll keep them feeling more like they can just pass by without any problems and they might stick around for a while and you can observe them from a distance. Make sure you respect their space. Animals do like space just like us. We wouldn't be, I mean, unless we're the paparazzi in the US toward poor Britney Spears and then we blame Britney Spears when she has a mental breakdown. But animals are the same way. They have the same needs. You can't just get all up in their face and expect them not to react at some point. Like, it's not fair to the animal to even assume that. And before we know it, we are in an area where you see the head of a gorilla and you can't see them too well. So the men take something and they take like their little what are those called? You know, like not a sword, but the the knife, <laughs> the knife, the fancy knife, not an axe. What are those called? Why can't I think of the word? Anyway, they're taking the hatchet maybe, and they're totally just taking care of the debris around and getting rid of the leaves that are in the way and the bushes so that we can clearly see the gorillas before us. And in this group, this is something that sometimes happens, but males often like to leave a group to find their own group and they'll spend a lot of time in isolation in order to find a new group of women so then they can be the leader, silverback. And other times they just stay in the group and they become more submissive to the one who's in charge, the dominant male. And they allow that because they prefer to be social because like us, very social beings. So it just depends on what the males decide. But in this group, there were actually shockingly four males, which is wild. Three women. And we got to see a rare group with a juvenile. And there's a baby and the baby is sleeping in the mother's arms. And they're all sleeping at this point and relaxing ignoring us, they can care less, they just walked a while and now they're sleeping. So we were so lucky, the baby was not feeling too well so he was coughing a little bit and then they start to move a bit more and wrestle up in their nest and, and they need to fart because they just ate a lot of leaves and they start to wake up. And as they wake up, the first thing they wanna do is eat. I mean, relatable, right? So they're eating, they're looking for leaves, they're all excited. The other little brother or cousin sometimes takes the baby on his back and they're walking around, it's so cute. And I'm just like in awe of all these creatures around us that are so surreal to see them up close and they look exactly how you would expect them to look. They're just gorgeous. You can tell which one's the dominant male because he is the largest, he is the strongest, his back is silver, and he starts walking over with his feet on the ground, but he's not using his paws on the ground like this to keep them clean so when you eat you have clean hands without needing to wash them. So the fists are on the ground and he's going through, walking just as the others do but with more confidence it looks like and more pride and dominant behavior he's just walking and going for it all of a sudden he's leading the group in a different direction and one of the girls in our group is in the direction that he's heading in so he's walking right toward her he is less than a meter away and the guides remind her remember just back up slowly because if you turn around and you run then you're a threat and we want to respect animals and we want to do what's right for them and what's right for us so she's slowly backing up. He can care less that she's in his way, but he is going to walk wherever he wants to walk. He's like, yeah, you're gonna move, not me. <laughs> 
which I love that, you know, it's like, I'm going here. As an animal, I, I own the jungle. You are a visitor and I know it. So you need to back up and politely do so and show me some respect and I'm going to walk wherever I want to walk next. So he's walking through and he's going through the jungle and now it looks more like a jungle in my opinion. You got more of the foliage on the ground, you have more vines and we're following them because we get a whole hour with them and they start to move and they're eating the leaves and they're up in the trees and we got to see a little bit of everything. So we got about 20 minute blocks of every single action, sleeping, waking up, eating, moving, going to a new destination, eating, and enjoying the foliage around. So we're all like, this was the best experience. First of all, we barely even had to walk to get to them. Second of all, there is every type of gorilla in here. We got the silverback. We have the other males who are less dominant. We have the females, we have a child, and we have a baby in this group. This is a big group that we got to see. So incredible, didn't even have to move much for it. So I really, really enjoyed this experience and all of us did so much. It was definitely what we were looking forward to most on the trip and it was just as amazing, if not more incredible than you could even imagine. So there's a lot more I could teach you about gorillas, but I always like to think about life as you should experience it for yourself and learn from those knowledgeable guides and you should go to the country and you should get yourself out there and I hope to, with my videos, encourage you to take the leap if you have the urge and to do the right thing when it comes to traveling. I think that's what I really like about this tour that we went on with the gorillas and whenever I go on safaris in Africa with responsible tour groups, you're seeing the animals in nature. You could go on the gorilla tours day after day after day and if you don't see them, then you just didn't get to see them. And you know that your money went toward, I mean that really is not the best scenario, but you know your money at least went toward keeping the gorilla safe so they're no longer being killed for their fur because you're profiting more off of them being alive than being dead. So that really is something that I enjoy about traveling in Africa, but I'm also very careful about what tour groups I go with and I use a website that I'll link down below for responsible traveling because I knew I wanted to travel throughout Africa and I knew that indigenous people can be exploited by the government or tour groups, etc, etc. And I didn't want to be a part of that and I also just didn't want to be a part of any animal exploitation and not treating the needs of the animals well. And I think the more we learn, the more we can improve and that's why I like doing these videos because sometimes people aren't aware of what animals need because they can't talk to us. So that's why it's so good to research. That's why it's so good to comment below if you know something else and to just learn from one another. I could be saying something that in 10 years we learn something new about gorillas and what they need and we end up reverting back to the drawing board and figure out how we can do tourism in, in a way that's best for the gorillas. And I hope that you all travel to countries that you wouldn't even think of to travel to before. It's absolutely amazing how much I took in this summer by traveling throughout countries in Africa and how much it has changed me as a person. So I hope this video encourages you to get out there, travel the world, see everything, and really experience the world as responsibly and as respectfully as possible. I hope you all really enjoy the experience of whatever you decide to do and put it in the comment section down below if you end up doing something amazing that is within traveling or seeing animals. I hope you all have the best day ever. Thank you so much for joining. I'll link the next video in the description box down below for you. And I will see you next week for a new upload about someone who got almost arrested in Botswana by the government, which is obscene. Please like and subscribe because it does help me so I can continue to help you and you can help someone too. Thank you so much for being here. Bye! Violin. You got me smiling.